Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Code Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about performance counters in .NET. It is a .NET tool which we can install using the .NET command and then look into performance counters of a running application. Now to do that, first I'm going to create a ASP.NET Core application and I'm going to name it as perfcounter.demo and I'm going to keep ASP.NET Core Web API and .NET Core 5.0 application. Now once the project start, I'm going to run the application as is and we'll have the weather forecast controller which gives in weather and we'll just keep it as is. I'm not going to make any changes. I'm just going to run it as a console mode. Now once the project is started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into PowerShell. Instead of PowerShell, you can use standard command prompt also. I prefer using PowerShell for this one. Now if you run the command .NET counters, if you get the options, that means it is installed. If it is not installed, all you have to do is you have to do .NET tool install a global install dotnet counters that's all you have to do and it is going to install the dotnet counters tool i'm not going to do it because i already installed now as you can see there are multiple options that we have one option is the monitor which is used for monitoring the dotnet application second one is for collect which is collecting the information monitoring is just viewing in the ui or the console whereas collect is collecting into a particular file and then list is for listing the counter names and descriptions and ps is just like docker ps you can use dotnet ps which is list all the process that can be monitored now we are going to start with .NET counters PS. And this is going to list all the applications that we can monitor. And right now we have the performance counter .demo project running, which we want to monitor. So to monitor that, what we can do is we can do .NET counters. And for monitor, we can do monitor and for process dash p and then process id here is 4372 so we're going to pass 4372 and if we run we're going to see that by default it shows up the system dot runtime and here it's going to show the allocation rate the exception count cpu usage the gc fragmentation the gen 0 gen 1 and gen 2 of gc and then bunch of other counters and this is one thing is pretty useful in my opinion because earlier the perfmon was available only for windows whereas this is since it is part of dotnet tool which means it can be used in linux or mac or any other devices where dotnet runs so this in my opinion is is extremely powerful now I'm going to get out of this here we just saw system dot runtime but if we want to see more than that we can provide the namespaces that we want to monitor so after this what we can do is we can say So we can say microsoft.sp.core.hosting. So it's going to add the microsoft.sp.core.hosting namespaces counter as well. So we can see it has added microsoft.sp.core.hosting and current request, failed request and all this information. And system.runtime still remains because it is the default one. And now if I run this application here, just do a tryout, you would see that the number of requests will go from zero to one. See, total request went up to one. I'll execute again. And we see that the total request count went up by another one. So in my opinion, this is a very handy feature. Now, what we want to do is after we see the default performance counter, we can have our custom counter also. And using custom counter, we can check some of the things that we want to check as a part of our custom counter. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of classes. The first class is going to be an event source, which is going to be responsible for writing the counter. The second class is going to be an action filter, which I'm going to use 
use to start a stopwatch when the action starts executing. Once action is executed, I'm going to use the previously created counter to log it. So let's first create the class for logging into the event source. So I'm going to create a new class and this time I'm going to name the class as request process time event event source so once the class is created i am going to derive this class from event source class and event source is available in the namespace system.diagnostic.tracing so i am going to add the namespace and then here as an attribute to the class, we are going to again use event source. And for the constructor, we are going to pass the name. And for the name, I'm going to use path counter dot demo dot request time. That's the name. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a private event counter variable. event counter and then what I'm going to do is as a part of the constructor I am going to declare this event counter and we're going to add request time and the source is of course this class and for the display name we can give HTTP request process time and for the display unit we can give it as millisecond next what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new method write for writing the request which will take the URL of the request and the elapsed time which will be in milliseconds and here it will just call the base classes write event and for event id we can give just one for the time being and then num it has arcs for the arcs we're just going to pass the url and the elapsed time and then after that we are going what we are going to do is we're going to use event counter dot write metric and this is where our value is going to be written and it's going to be the elapsed time finally we are going to just override the dispose method we are going to keep the base dot disposing but before that we are going to see that if the event counter is not null then we are going to dispose the event counter and then we can set the event counter to null. So this is our class which is responsible for logging and it is going to log the counter which is the elapsed time using the right metrics of the event counter. So this is the method which is going to write into the counters, the event counter. And this is something which we are going to observe in the PowerShell. Now once this is done, next thing what we are going to do is we're going to create another class. It's going to be an action filter attribute. So we are going to name it as request process time action filter attribute. And this class is going to derive from action filter attribute and the action filter attribute is part of the microsoft.asp.core.mvc.filters so I'm going to add the namespace and then here what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new stopwatch and the stopwatch is part of system.diagnostic so I'm going to add it. This should be lowercase and we can make it read only.
So once we declare this, next we're going to override the on action executing and on action executed. So on action executing, once this method is executed, we're going to simply do stopwatch.start and then we're going to override on action executed and on action executed what we are going to do is we're going to do stopwatch dot stop and next thing we are going to do is now we want to write it using the request time processor event source so for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a constructor and in the constructor I'm going to expect an injected parameter so event source and next here what I'm going to do is I'm going to do request process event source dot write and for the write looks like there is already a write method so this is probably not a good name I'm going to change this name to log and here instead of write I'm going to use log and for URL I'm going to pass context dot HTTP context dot request dot get get display URL this is part of Microsoft SPNet code dot extensions namespace it's an extension method so I'm going to add that namespace and then for the elapsed time I'm going to use stopwatch dot elapse time in millisecond that's it so now this class is also ready now once this is ready next thing I am going to do is first of all I am going to add this class into dependency injection as a singleton class so here I'm going to do services dot add singleton and I'm just going to provide the class name and next thing I'm going to do is in the add controller I'm going to use the controller options and here I'm going to do options dot filters dot add and to the add I'm going to use my request request process time action filter attribute so I'm going to add it and that's about it now my application is ready to use the action filter so I'm going to run the application and this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these also as a part of the counters that I want to observe so now I'm going to run the SPNet counter PS again to get the new process ID and then I'm going to say process 16144 and then I'm going to pass the new counter that I want to observe I have to pass counters then to pass the monitor and then okay now let's try and yep so now as soon as I execute the request I can see that my new performance counter HTTP request process time shows up now because it is the timing there might be a difference in timing the actual time is not showing up here but what we are going to do is now we are going to use the other command which I mentioned earlier the collect command so let's let's do that let's quit this now next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to instead of monitor I'm going to use collect here and then after that here what I'm going to do is I'm going to use format is JSON and then I'm going to provide the output path is going to be trace.json and then I'm going to get rid of it from here and I'm going to give the counter and for the counter name I'm going to use this name again I'm going to run this and it has started the session and I'm going to put a breakpoint in here just to make sure it is working as expected so I click on execute stop we can see that this object is available and we can see that it is writing and even counter is also available and it added the process time 
I'm going to execute it one more time and then I'm going to stop the session. The file is saved in C drive, stage.json. I'm going to copy the content of this JSON file and I'm going to paste it here. So it will make it pretty. So here we can see it is logging for every few seconds. It is logging the counter. And you can see here for a single request, the value of 2509 showed up. And then we have another time we click twice. So the second time it is 2637 millisecond. And that's about it. So as you can see, this is a really nice and powerful feature. And the fact that it is working as a part of .NET tools, it can run anywhere. It can run in Linux, Windows. It really doesn't matter where we run it. And it can be really, really helpful in production as well. So if you want to log counters and figure out the performance of an application. So that's all I wanted to cover for today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching this video.